Hey, my name is Al Sergal. I live here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm a drummer who for the last 12 years have been on the road. I've been on the road with Jason Upton. I've also had the pleasure of recording with people like John Mark McMillan, Jonathan and Melissa Helzer, Josh Bobwin, all sorts of folks. Uh, when I'm not out doing worship stuff, my, I guess, natural habitat is straight ahead jazz music. Um, I've worked with Marcus Printup, Marcus Printup, who's from the Lincoln Center Band, um, and all sorts of other people. Currently, like this coming weekend, at the Jacksonville Jazz Festival, I'll be performing with Noel Friedline and vocalist Maria Howell. I'm here to talk about my gear, and I'm really excited about it. So, the most important piece for me has always been cymbals and my snare drum, because um, that's what I've been able to travel with uh, literally all over the world with Jason Upton. And so, uh, several years ago, I was introduced uh, by a mutual friend to a company called Heartbeat Percussion out of Canada, and uh, I've been endorsing their cymbals for a long time, and throughout that relationship, they have been really helpful uh, in me finding the right cymbals for the various situations I'm in. I'm in the studio a lot, I'm also, when I'm home, playing jazz a lot, and then I play live worship. And I, I don't think there's a one-trick pony. There's not one set of cymbals you can do for any of them. So currently, this setup that I have is my jazz setup. Some of it overlaps with Jason Upton's music, just because the darker tones of the cymbals um, work well for what he does. He's a singer that plays piano, and um, s darker cymbals end up working well with the piano sound. So what I'm using here is this is a 24 inch epic ride. It's very thin sounding. It, it looks huge, but it can be washy, but it works really well. It almost sounds like a flat ride to me, but it's very thin. You can also crash on it. So it can end up being kind of a dark crash. It can, it's, it can be a main ride. I use this with worship stuff. Uh, I've used it a ton with jazz stuff and really pre I really enjoy this cymbal. Um, Epic is the line and it's heartbeat, per heartbeat percussion or heartbeat cymbals. Um, in the same line, I've, I just finally found some hats that I just love. Um, I have several heartbeat hats and they all work in different scenarios. With Jason I use their 15 inch studio model but for jazz and as of recently I've been using these 15 inch epics uh, because they they're patterned after they kind of sound like jazz the old Mel Lewis cymbals they have a, a real light and buttery sound that I like. Um, I have a pair of thir I have a pair of 13 inch epic um, hi-hats as well. Um, but they were, they were, I was finding that for the clubs that I'm playing, actually the concerts that I'm doing, they were a little too small for the environment. They work great for like a piano bar or even a small, a small place where it's only maybe 50 seats. But when you get into like 300, 500 seat venues, I needed something that could, that gave me a little bit of weight. Um, while we're talking about hi-hat, for those of you who have not tried out the new Remo hi-hat clip, good gracious, you're missing out. Um, you know, I've, I've rarely used the phrase, uh, this hi-hat clip is like heaven on earth, but <laughs> it really is. So this thing is genius. Um, as you can see, it's got spring-loaded, but there's this groove part that makes it very simple to take it on and off. So it kind of latches into here and kind of sits on there. So when you put the cymbal on, I'll do this really slowly. So there's that. You put the felt on then this little piece locks in on the bottom really, with a little bit of pressure, locks on. <laughs> of course it wouldn't now. And then you've got it in there. And then the adjustment's up here. So you can really dial in and it stays. So when you dial in exactly what you want, I like a little bit of a floppiness to my, if you can see I've got a little bit of give in my cymbal on the top there. So the Remo hi-hat clamp really helps out with that. I often, if I'm in a club and these hi-hats need to be dried up, I'll put a splash cymbal underneath the bottom hat. Let me do that real quick so you can check it out. These are uh, some of the heartbeat splash cymbals. But this is a little trick I learned that when you're, if you're in an environment and you immediately need to change the hi-hat tone or, you know, kind of crispen it up, 
it's a little bit drier, a little bit quieter. So you can dig in a lot more and not be worried about how bright the cymbals are. This bass drum beater is one of the my favorite things outside of this double chain pearl. But this is their medium beater. And just like a stick with the sticks with your cymbals, the relationship with your drumstick and the cymbal, you know, you wouldn't think, but the bass drum beater is very important to the tone of the, of the kick um, and what you're going after. So back and we'll finish up the cymbals. Uh, my left side ride is a 22 inch jazz ride. This is the new, the new jazz ride by Heartbeat. They make this in a 22 and a 24 and a 20. Um, I just got the 22 and I'm in love with it. It's, it's by far one of my favorite cymbals they've made outside of these hi-hats. You can, you can really dig into the cymbal and it doesn't really, it doesn't get really big. It kind of maintains this uh, stays right in the pocket of volume to where you can you can play fast you can, and it stays light which is really important when you're doing jazz works a lot it's very most of them are small venues intentionally because jazz musicians love to feel the audience and interact with the audience so yeah Jazz Ride 22 inch, it's a relatively new symbol to the Heartbeat collection, but love it. Last, and these are all ride symbols. <laughs> um, this is the Vintage, it's a 22 inch Vintage Ride, and then I put three rivets in it. Rivets really help. I mean, rivets add a different color to the cymbal, but for jazz, when you're playing slower tempo, when you're playing a slower tempo in jazz, like this might be. One, two. Those rivets really help broaden the quarter note, which helps kind of groove, but you don't, you don't have to fill the space. The rivets fill the space. So I always have at least one or two riveted cymbals. Um, sometimes I'll put a Promark chain, which is a chain, I don't have it with me, but I'll put a chain on this one and that creates a rivet effect. So those are the symbols I'm currently using on my jazz setup. Uh, when I'm playing with Jason Upton, I use a whole set of classics, which are more like the old K's, uh, like the traditional K's. Um, and I have a 21 inch crash, 20 inch crash, uh, 22 inch uh, medium ride. Um, so I just love their stuff. I have a slew of heartbeat symbols. Um, as far as cymbal bags, uh, I want to talk about these guys. Tackle Instruments Supply Company. If you guys haven't checked them out, this is a boutique company out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. And uh, this bag smells so good. It smells like a Boy Scout project. It smells like canvas and leather, which I love. Um, th they send you these nice sleeves. Uh, it's sturdy leather and canvas, and they have these sleeves that are like this. This is sturdy leather, and it's really well done. You get three sleeves. Um, has a really nice pouch for your hi-hat, or even if you want, um, for those guys that like splash cymbals. Um, and then, actually, while we're on the subject of tackle, this is a 24-inch cymbal bag, and they also make a 22. Uh, and again, they're boutique, great guys. I met them at NAMM and just fell in love with their products. And this stick bag, I love it because there's no zipper. Um, well, there's a zipper on the side, but it's a rolling bag. So it's a lot like some of the mallet bags you might see with, that percussionists have, which are long mallet bags where they keep all the marimba mallets. But this thing is great. I can kind of itemize. You can see I'm kind of geeked out. <laughs> I'm pretty itemized. But you just take this thing, and you can do it any different way. I just roll it like this. Again, this is a weathered canvas bag. And you literally, it's so simple, you just tie it like that, and then you can carry it. So, it's so great. Okay, so I don't have an endorsement, but again, I'd love to have an endorsement. Um, I, I've used Vic Firth for years, love their sticks. When I was playing Vic Firth, I used the Peter Erskine Ride Stick, um, and I'm trying to think of the, and, and just the 5A Extreme. So anytime I did worship, I was using the 5A Extreme. 
when I was out at Revival Drum Shop in Portland, um, that's where I learned about tackle instruments, the cymbal bag and stick bag, and they also showed me a lot of the new Vader sticks because I hadn't stayed in touch with Vader in a long time. So I got to try out this Bebop 550. It has um, the teardrop tip, which I love. It's very old school, gets a real dark tone out of the cymbals. It makes my cymbals um, sound really good. I like the way it sounds on, the, on records. I like the way it sounds when I'm playing back. Um, it's a 550 because it's a 550, uh, 0.550 diameter. Um, and I've realized that I just like that width of stick. I, I don't normally um, get that detailed, but I did. So you can hear... Very nice. It's it's it just gives a nice. It it pulls out the darker tones of the cymbal. So I use this on almost every jazz gig. I even use it with Jason Upton because that's a little bit. I mean that's that's not. Um, it's a nuance and it's a very musical. Um, I love playing with Jason. Just it's a very musical situation. So I don't have to play the drums very loud. A lot of times it's just playing in the right spots. Um, when I have to play and really dig in, I've started using the Vader 8A, um, and it's a more of a rounded tip. And you can tell, I've even used these on jazz gigs or outdoor festivals for jazz stuff, just because you can hear immediately it gives a more distinct sound on the cymbal and it, it, it translates a little more for larger venues or bigger venues. <laughs> So, uh, for instance, when I've played locally in Charlotte at the Midway Guitar Studio with my own band, the Alfred Servel Fortet, quick plug, <laughs> um, I use the Bebop 550 because it's a smaller room, it seats about 60 people, and there's literally someone sitting about maybe two feet from my drums when I'm performing, so I really want to play with the utmost of dynamic, and people can hear the stick, the stick sound pretty easily with the Bebop stick. Um, Locally, I play a jazz series, concert series, at the Beckler Museum of Modern Art. That is usually about 400 per seating. They have two sets, so I, I play in about, there's about 800 people a night, 400 they can seat, so it's a bigger venue, and it's a little tougher on the sound side, so I use these sticks. Um, and I think, I'll have to check, but I think they are both 550. That's why I use them. If not, this is maybe a 555, but this is relatively the same diameter. I'm just changing the tip and the taper of the stick is not quite the same as the bebop. The bebop tapers just a slight bit more. And the taper is this area of the stick going from the fat part down to the tip. So you can see it's not quite as much of a taper on the 8A as there is on the bebop. I, the relationship between the tip of the stick and the cymbal is extremely important when you're playing most of your groove on a cymbal, which jazz is pretty much you're playing your your beat is really swinging, connecting with the bass player and making that quarter note dance. So uh, I spent a lot of time trying to find the right stick, and I really enjoy these Vader sticks. In terms of brushes and other tricks I've got in my bag, um, I have these innovative percussion. Um, I use these on cajon, um, and I use these. They're they're uh, like a plastic. And I, uh, I endorse the box kit. Um, they're handcrafted cajones out of Moravian Falls, North Carolina. Josh Trask makes them. And Josh gave me a pair of these because they sound great on cajones. But then when I was live with Jason, I was trying to find different ways to supply rhythm. And these sound... Good set. So you can get a really quiet sound and supply rhythm without it being brush, brushy, which I love brushes. And so in terms of that, these, these work well for sort of like if I want to simulate hand percussion and not beat up my fingers on the rim. You have to be careful with that. Um, I always have used telescopic the 583R, Regal Tip, 583R, they're the classic rubber, uh, telescopic, so they, they, they stick, you push them out. 
I always bend that one back for my right hand, that way it cups in there real well. So these are the classic brush, um, made by Regal Tip, and I've, that's those are the brushes I use. And last but not least, just the standard um, Hot Rods by Promark. A lot of times I use these for more or less for like simulating rhythms on the on the. I don't use them so I use them for grooves on like a hi hat, but a lot of times I use them just on the rims to. Since I was, I think I was five years old, and my dad was a band director, I've kind of always seen this crown with R-E-M-O. <laughs> well, I had a little tiny practice pad and a pair of 2B drumsticks, and the Vic, they were Vic Firth Generals, and um, a practice pad that had a little Remo logo on it. And ever since then, I'm, I've, I've always put Remo drum heads on my, head, on my, on my drums. Um, I, because I do a lot of jazz work, um, I'm more often than not using the Ambassador Coated on my toms and on the bottom, on the bottom heads, I just use Ambassador Clear. So I'll show you that real quick. So that's an Ambassador Clear. Okay, these drums are a bebop kit made by Tim Roberts and the company is Reverie Drums. Tim is a former student of mine and I couldn't be more proud to be sitting behind his drums. Um, he's based out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and when he played me this kit and showed me that he was making it, I got really excited. I think the first thing that got me really excited was the tone of the bass drum. This is an 18-inch kick. Um, these drums are all four-ply mahogany uh, poplar shells, and they've got semi-rounded edges with re-rings. Um, so when I played the kick, as opposed to like worship or pop music where the kick is really meant to like just give this punch, this, because of the tone of the bass drum, this is an open bass drum, it's, it's got a little bit of a tone, it almost sounds like a really low floor tom, that's on purpose. That way I can have them, I have another, another source or another place to go with when I'm playing or accenting in jazz. So it ends up being this complement to the other toms, the snare, the kick, the hi-hat. Um, so I really fell in love with that. And uh, yeah, I was like, Tim, what are you doing to me? This is great. I already have enough drums, but I guess maybe I don't have enough drums. <laughs> so um, this is a 12 inch rack tom, as I said before. Um, and I've got it pretty pitched, again, I've got it pitched pretty high. And the reason I pitched the drums high, it's intentional. pitched it high because I work with an acoustic bass player and frequency wise if I'm gonna if he takes a solo or I'm playing with him while he's swinging and playing um, you know doing a, a walking bass line in jazz I don't want my sounds to get in the way of his tone so I, I kind of always have my so these are open I've got a little bit of moon gel only uh, I kind of have it, I always have moon gel or some white gaff tape or black gaff tape on me just in case because every room is different. Um, so I tried, but I try to get the drums out of the frequency range of the bass um, and I try to keep them open uh, just because it's more inspiring to me for jazz music. So um, yeah, these are the Reverie drums and that's the, the basics of that kit. I just love the way they speak. It's a four, four ply shell, so because there's not as many ply, it's not a heavy drum, so I can articulate it really low volumes. Let me make sure I've got two of the same stick here. Um, I can play really, really low volumes and... Um, the snare drum I'm using, and again, this is a former student of mine, friend of mine, Rhett Hendrix. Hendrix Drums. Um, this is a, a walnut stave snare, and Rhett came to see me play in Birmingham, Alabama with Jason Upton, and we, we started talking about, now this is an earlier, like one of the first models, so 
Rhett is making drums for all sorts of really phenomenal drummers now, and I'm so proud of him. Um, I've got a Remo Emperor head on the top. Um, this great um, trick throw switch, which is great. It has different levels that you can apply the snares. And then I've got, uh, I've got pure sound snares, a really wide one on there, because I like to really get as much snare as possible. Um, you can see it's re if you get close enough in there, you can see that it is, it is reinforced. But it is a stave snare, and Rhett's suggestion to me, between because I'm I play sensitively and I play real quiet, but I also need to get volume, and I also don't like to have to hit the drums harder just to get louder. I think good drums tuned well with good technique, you can get a lot of sound out of the drum with with minimal effort. And I won't go into a drum lesson, but. Um, this drum really does that. So this drum is it's pretty wide open right now But I detune this thing and put some tape on it and have recorded it on numerous records And it sounds a lot like that kind of gushy gushy snare that you might that might have like an 80s throwback sound to it But then it tunes up and sounds great with brushes It's just a versatile drum and Rhett did a really good job And again, I want to make a small caveat that this was like one of the first drums he made um and so uh, he's, I mean, this is a great drum, but he's making like phenomenal drums now, so. It cuts through pretty good, but it's not not killing me. Like it's not overly. It just has a cut that goes through, but it's not like killing my ears or bright. Um, it's a very warm drum, and it can also get very soft. It responds well to the brushes, which I like that too. And that's partially the head, but it has a lot to do with the drum too. So it's, a, it's just a really responsive drum. So guys, thanks for spending some time with me. Definitely check out Tone Heaven on Instagram. They're giving lots of great information on gear. Um, just to recap, I think the biggest thing, if you haven't picked up on it, I'm big on relationships. So I have friendships with all these guys. I talk to them constantly, and they're always trying to help me with the best gear I can get so that I can sound as good as I possibly can. Um, Reverie Drums, Tim Roberts, definitely check them out. Hendrix Drums definitely check them out, Red Hendrix. Um, the guys at Heartbeat, Chad and Noel, I can't thank them enough for their endorsement. Um, heartbeatpercussion.com. Remo Percussion, check them out. Definitely check out the hi-hat clip. Vader, drumsticks, love them. Regal Tip, brushes, all that stuff. Just check them out. And last but not least, uh, Tackle Instrument Supply Company out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. They, they, get, they make the cymbal bag and the stick bag. Um, you can check me out at alcircle.com or alfredcircle4.com and just keep in touch. If you have any questions about gear, about lessons or anything, hit me up.